uh, wrapping a few things up. Couldn't sleep, so just thought I would get back on. How's everybody doing tonight? I just saw this, uh, I don't know, just kind of had me reminiscing a little bit. So you see the thumbnail, we about to get on it. <clears throat> Kathleen Boot helped create the assembly language. <laughs> she died a couple days ago at 100 <laughs> years old. Just kind of had me reminiscing because, boy, similar is a uh, low level programming language. So we're going to peek at that a little bit. We can start talking about programming the registers on a on a chip, right? So <laughs> you don't see a lot of that type of code done anymore. So once again, I think it just kind of had me reminiscing. So let's get at it. Make that a little bigger. What's up, man? How you been doing, man? It's been a while, man. How's your cloud stuff come? When you hitting the cloud pretty hard, Israel? What's, how's your cloud coming? So RIP Kathleen Booth, the inventor of the assembly language, builder and programmer of the ARC and SCC turned 100 this year. Obituary, Professor Kathleen Booth, one of the last of the early British computer pioneers, has died at the age of 100. So let's just kind of read through it. Once again, I should do assembly language, so... Uh, we're gonna pick a little bit out of assembly language. It just kind of had me reminiscing of, of college when I was doing uh, assembly language in ooh, probably 1988. <laughs> was watching assembly class. So. Uh, Kathleen Helder Vera Britton was born in Winchester, England, July 1922. During the Second World War, she studied the Royal Holloway University of London where she got her bachelor's in science and mathematics in 1944. After graduating, she became a junior scientist at the Royal Aircraft Establishment, a research organization. Two years later, she moved back to, uh, I'm going to say, Brickback College, first as a research assistant and later as a lecturer, then as a research fellow. Yeah, what's up, J.M.? I was just, it just kind of came on my <laughs> radar, so... Yeah, a little late night. I couldn't sleep, so I was watching a little football. So I was like, ah, let me do something. Long story short, I used to do assembly language in 1988. It was one of the hardest classes I ever took in college. So I just want to give a shout out to Kathleen Booth. Just going to read through her obituary and reminisce a little bit about assembly language. And that was to see some of the first mainframes behind the scenes. Uh, that's what they were actually using for operating system language. So. Just gonna reminisce on her a little bit. She also worked in the British Rubber Production Research Association, where she met and worked with the mathematicians Andrew Donald Booth, who later became her husband. After studying X-rays, crystallographer uh, Booth was working out crystal structures using X-rays and differential data. Finding manual calculations very tedious, he built the analog compute to automate the process. In 1946, Booth and Booth collaborated at Birkbeck on a very early, early digital computer. The ARC automatic relay calculation and doing so founded what is now Birkbeck Department of Computer Science and Information Systems. So, yep, that was one of the first mainframes. Yeah, I'm gonna call it a mainframe. I'm kind of hesitant. There was really transistors, but that probably would be the first mainframe. Uh, back then. So, yeah, it was one of the first mainframes. 
The Ark was constructed in Garden City, close to the headquarters. That booth designed it, both Kathleen Britland and our fellow research assistants built the hardware. We obtained funding from the Rockefeller Foundation for Booth and Bithen to visit the Institute of Advanced Study at Princeton, where Booth reported their only <laughs> friend, John uh, Vaughn, gave them any time. <laughs> Von Newman explained his concept of what's now called the Von Newman computer architecture. We're going to play that. That's, that's the big mainframe right there, JL. Like you said, that's old school transistors. Booth and Britain returned to UK, redesigned their calculator based around these ideas, leading to the R2 in the process of inventing the first drum memory to provide enough storage to hold both program information and data. The R2 relays proved too much. So in 1948, Booth and Britain moved to simple electronic computers and all purpose X ray computers, the Apex. You can try out the apex in the uh, mess uh, emulators. So let's see what it looked like. Let's see what sound they got with it. I'm gonna share that and reshare that. Share the sound. Share that. What's up, but game over? Look at some old school uh mainframes uh the lady who actually invented assembly language passed away i used to do assembly years ago so just kind of looking at that so let's check this out see what one of the first mainframes looked like See if, I don't, see if I get any sound out of it. The item behind me is the HET-1 computer, which was the first electronic computer that was used for uh, commercial purposes other than the Leo machine, uh, uh, which Joe Lyons had developed for earlier. In the British, uh, in, in the UK, I should say. Um, Dr. Booth, who was a lecturer at Birkbeck College, needed calculating machines, computers for crystallographic calculations and he um, w was developing this machine in a barn at Fenny Compton just north of he said developed in a barn look how big that is <laughs> so, I mean that's I mean with, compared to what we got now <laughs> were you using those when you began your, no not quite this I sh I'll show you the pictures of one I was using that's a little older than me because he think I think they're talking about they were doing that in 1950. <laughs> that's a little before me, but mine was about the same size of that. That's old transistors. So I don't, I don't, what I was using didn't have the old transistors on it, but I will show a picture of the Coventry. Frame. And he needed input and output uh, to feed the information in or to print it or, or record it on punch cards in the output. So he did a deal with British Tabulating Machine Company uh, that he'd swap the design of his early machine, which I'm leaning on, um, for punch card machinery, which he would then have for Birkbeck College for input and output to, to his computers. So I was sent down there. So in the old days, you didn't write code like on a uh, keyboard. Well, you did the keyboard and then you would come out with punch cards and you would line your punch cards up and the punch cards would be actually what the program was written on. Not this, not on floppy disks. It was on punch cards. The guy I used to work with, he said, I, you, he's 10 years older than me. I'm an interview. He said he used to do punch cards. Uh, I graduated college in 1990, and I think he graduated college, IU in 80. So he said he was doing punch cards in the 80s. So. There were the two other chaps to copy this machine in this <laughs> decrepit barn at, 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 in Fanny Compton. Uh, which copied, I mean on paper, I don't mean physically, and record the circuits, record the layouts of the boards, and then take these drawings. Well, like anything, once you redid your uh, program, if you had an error in one of the punch cards, you would just retype it and retype that card with the error 
then put it in your stack and rerun it through. So back to the British Tabulating Machine Company's works at Letsworth into the, their development uh, laboratories in Ickneal Road, Ickneal Way. And this is what we uh, produce from those di diagrams. The great difference between a computer and a calculator is that it has a test function that you can use many times all over it. What is a test function? It means that you make the machine look at a particular digit. So look at those uh, circuits, <laughs> one, two, three. And really, when you look at a computer, that's the binary segments, right? If you look at traditional binary, uh, behind the scenes, right? Each, it would be what, zero, one, two, four, eight, right? Then the nibble is four, bit. And realistically, if you look behind the binary slots on the chip, looks like that where it has the numbers right so that just makes me laugh right? in the register history. if it's a one we will do something there if it's a naught, we will do something there quite different so you can build up a tree of choices using this test function which makes this machine compared with the calculator extremely intelligent compared with the human mind of course it's not intelligent but it means that you can make all sorts of choices is he male or female did they go on holiday um all sorts of questions that you want to answer uh, was he paid last month is he overdrawn all these tests would be done by this sort of function so take it to bank just those things i've been mentioning uh, would be built into an account testing program to decide whether to cash somebody's check or not for instance So that was it just the, the sheer size of it's got me just got out of as me just kind of laughing the first when you look at the just the sheer size of what computers used to be in now what you got in your pocket is way quicker than what that is right so for me that's just the um the leap of technology and how quicker it gets right you went from that to your cell phone's got more memory more dead space and more power than what you have in your pocket right so the two is I'll be 55, so it'll be interesting to when I'm 75, how much power, how big it will be, and kind of like what what would technology be like then. So 1950, Kathleen got married. She got her PhD in applied mathematics in University of London to secure further funding for work. Booth went back to the Rockefeller Foundation. Uh, on the condition that Apex worked with human languages as, well, as well as just mathematics. The results was a demonstration of a machine in 1955, as well as building the hardware for the first machine. She wrote all the software for the ARC-2 and the SC machine in the process she called contracted notations, which would later be known as the assembly language, right? So we're going to actually look on Wikipedia and just look at the assembly language and, and how it was written. but. You got to think they took transistors with some language, got some big funding, right? Because those computers probably was costing, you know, 100000 which is a million dollars now to try to get that to actually work. Do you think you'll be able to keep up with technology when you're 75? Oh, ooh, that's an excellent question. To be uh, realistic, um, I don't know, Jamie. I would hope so, but when I look at my older relatives now, the cognitive functions, you just kind of slow down a lot. The cool thing, though, is like I, everybody know I've been doing AWS. What I learned in 20 years ago, right, AWS, I, I probably only learned 30% of what I would consider something new. Right? When you talk about Linux, I've been, I've been doing Linux, right? You're talking about low balancer right so some of the fundamentals shout out to keep it techie shout out to women in linux we always talk about tech g talk about fundamentals a lot of times jam the fundamentals is the same right so i always think if if i fundamentally so if, if i become a which i hope to be an aws not a SME, but a senior in aws then 20 years from now is that going to change a ton jam um because we seem to make it easier for people without computer skills to use computers right the programming seems 
kind of the same. Uh, the networking seems the same, right? It's just a little different because it's in the it's in the cloud, right? So in the future, technology really is going to be like electricity, right? So what part of that would I have to learn new, JM? So I'm hoping to be keeping up with technology uh, at 75. What I can promise you, JM, is I know I'll be trying to learn the newest technology. Now, if I'm cognitive enough to keep up, that, that's a whole se a separate answer, but I, I, I hope so. Um, yeah, I believe that IT is actually become easy to learn. Yeah, I believe that because, right, we keep putting that abstraction on there. Because, you know, we were talking about um, my man in our earlier one. Because you put abstraction on top of stuff to make it easy. Because I used to have to do a similar. You used to have to write your own SQL. When I started doing web pages, you know, you had to do your own HTML and JavaScript, your own JSP modeling. Now the program, when you do C Sharp, all that stuff's built on top. When you do Angular or Node.js, right, you're doing the abstraction and it builds all that for you, all right? When you talk about uh, websites, you can go to Wix, drop you a couple images, hit a button, man, you got a website, right? Now you don't understand the, the programming underneath, the HTML underneath, the CSS underneath, right? So you you have all that. You can use, boot, yeah, Bootstrap. Uh, shout out, I'm a Java guy, so I always use... Uh, you know, um, bootstraps with a uh, hibernate spring. You know, if you're doing spring, spring boot, it boots all that stuff for you too, JM. So, so right. So theoretically, it, it seems to be getting easier, especially when you do AWS. You just got to master services, right? And at the end, you really wiring services together, right? The technology underneath just works, right? So. <clears throat> So let's hit that again. So she invented what she called contract notation, and which later become known as a similar language. For me, that's one of the first programming languages you know that you could do and actually take the registry on <laughs> on a, a eight hundred eight uh, microchip, right, and do calculations. Shift left was uh, multiplying by ten. Shift right was Dividing by 10 because you were moving the registry and the bits on that, right, to do the calculation. That still happens, but all the abstractions over top of that, you don't worry about any of that now. So she also discussed synchronous and asynchronous operations in a paper linked back in 1958. Programming for automated digital calculator was one of the first programming things. And if you came to my thing, we talked about a SNS. So SNS is synchronous versus asynchronous, right? Synchronous. Right means I need to wait asynchronous. I could put it on the queue, and it's gonna let me know right and give me a response later. What's up, helmet? So, so that so she started talking about that. You know, that's what 1958, and now we still talking about asynchronous and synchronous, right? So that same year she started working with neural networks. Neural networks is the beginning of AI and artificial intelligence, right? And she did that off her paper for assembly so she's talking about neural networks in uh 1993 right which is the basis for artificial intelligence when i was an undergrad i took a neural networks class right so that's basically uh having your computer think like a brain so she was writing that what in 1993 uh 58 so she was at the forefront of thinking Right, staying on top of it. So the Booth family moved to Canada in the 1960s, where they both were still working in academia. They both retired in the 70s, and Kathleen Booth died in 2022, survived by her daughter. The reason I did it is I used to do assembly languages. That's one of the first programming our languages I learned. Uh, when I got to college uh, in high school, I actually did RPG, Fortran, PL1. Uh, from a high school class, but the first hard class I ever had with, let me, I really struggled in comp sci was assembly. Uh, assembly, well, whew. but um, like I said, those were low level. If you was learn, if you were back then, people were writing drivers for printers, drivers for scanners, right? You would do all that assembly because you needed to be at that low level language to be able to do that, right? Once again, 
like Jam said, it's all that's abstracted away now. So, and look how big the computer was, my man had right there. So let me look at one of the um bring up one of the IBM mainframes I used to work on. What was that? IBM 3070. 3070 mainframe. Jim, that's kind of I worked on the state where I worked at had an IBM 3070. Those were the uh, tape drives. Uh, they should show the reels. Let me show the. So that's what I used to work on, Jim. That's how old I am. When I first was my first internship was IBM 3070. So what's up, Black Dub? Salute to my man. Mm. Since it's easy to use, do you think it'll be difficult to find people who can understand and prove technology be behind those tools to make it easier to use and learn? I think it's going to be like it is. I think, uh, I don't think it, well, I'm going to roll that back a little bit. It's going to be a little easier, I wouldn't say. The reason I said it'd be a little easier now because you got kids doing programming. <laughs> already at the middle school level when you go to some of the the bigger schools the schools with money you've got kids right now writing macros in excel which is really beginning programming so um when you take those skills now you you get people programming the reason i still think it'll be shortage was i was on a live with um before the billions it was before the billions gabe max the million and somebody else was in the middle the, the scary thing, and I say this all the time, is I graduated college in 90. I was the only person, black person in computer science. Gabe said he was the only one. But, but uh, before the bill, you say he was the only one. So you got about 40 years of people in school with going to major universities. And we're the only black guys in it, right? And you stress that out. I just don't think technology uh, is seen as a viable um career for a lot of people i think a lot of people still say it's nerdy it's it's this or that it's getting a little more love because of youtube i think youtube is kind of like you're in this vacuum so you think it's bigger than what it is right so i try to you know my son was in high school he's 30 now when i used to go to his high school those guys had no interest in doing itjm so i i still think it's going to be a shortage right so um uh in the united states uh and two is we're trying to figure out how to bring back chip production back to the United States and get that done. Because we figured out if China stopped giving us chips, we can't even make hardware, software. We can't make stuff for our planes, nuclear control. All that stuff is done overseas. So I think it's still going to be a shortage, though, JM. I was only trusted people allowed to use it um well you got to remember i used to work for the state so the state you know they had screens that people put in uh child welfare and stuff was using green screen back then but yeah you know you had to be a programmer you know like kind of like now you had to have a security clearance to get in the room so that was my first internship so what they used to do they used to make all the college kids and i'm gonna show you let's, the tape drive uh, jcl tape drive so those, even though those machines were big, they didn't have a lot of space. So what you would have to do is my summer job. There it is. My summer job. Oh, I need that. I need that. Where was that at? My summer job basically was. What was that? Come on. 
those tape drives it's called jcl so when you needed more space your jcl would tell the operator to put the tape on these drives so they made all the summer school school uh interns put the tapes on that room was about 45 degrees so you were in there with a suit with a park on the jcl would tell you what tape number and you would put it on the tape drive you would thread it to and it will read the tape and put the information on the disc for whatever job that could be printing payroll checks or running some kind of child welfare but once that job was done it would write it to the tape and you would take it off the disc and you would put something else over there to write over that disc space because if those those machines were big they didn't have a lot of disc space so that's what i did summer of 1988 jm I was doing the putting tapes on. Then the next time I actually got to do a little program, but they want you to suffer in there. Why? Because if it took the interns a while to get your tape, they want you to be in there and suffer a little bit. So you won't be so hard on those guys. Talk about where's my tape. So uh, I got, I got, I cut, I got my teeth. I think that me cut my teeth out painfully. Wrote a similar language. That sister program. I got on a mainframe at night. I would occasionally out. Shout out to GMR. He's right there with me. I did JCL just for the summer. Then I went to client server. Um, actually, I take that back. I did a VAX hybrid of that called PIC. It was kind of this semi relational uh, mini computer. Then I went to client server, starting with Oracle, did forms and reports. Then uh, I got off in that Oracle bag and I've been strong ever since. But the cool thing is, is those guys program you didn't have a lot of memory man so your programs had to be tight you couldn't be wasting a lot of memory you didn't have much memory and you so your programs had to be tight your code had to be tight because you know you want you to have that blazing speed so i always thought those guys were better program now you can be sloppy man you got infinite memory infinite disk space you could just spin up four thousand ec2s you don't have to be tight i'm 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 sounding old, JM. I'm telling him get off of my programming line. <laughs> you, you had to be tight back then. Uh YouTube and TikTok is making tech. Um, no, it, it's making it cool helmet to be a content creator. Those people aren't in tech. Like the girl that got in trouble. She was marketing. She on her on her cell phone at Apple videotaping herself. I think they're making it cool to be a content creator helmet. Check, think about it. I could be wrong. Two streams in one day. <laughs> I'm a little too late to learn. Check out the replay, casual kind. Of, this is a little history, casual kind. Of. We we just going back, man. I just remember that assembly, man. Shout out to my man Jim. He joining us today. He he was out there getting his his 360 mainframe grind on. I was just putting tapes on and doing a little JCL. I wouldn't get my programming thing off yet. So yeah, I'm trying to do two streams, man. Doing my um. Lapeef imitation casual economist trying to do like or or my man <laughs> doing eight streams. <laughs> I think it's I think it's sometimes portrayed as easy. Star pucks all day in life. You still got to get the where. Oh yeah, the cool thing is is um we talked about that. It is so big now. Like I said, I started off as a junior programmer. Programmer. I was a web ad man. I was a uh, system manager i had what four developers working for me now i do compliance i just make sure they whatever their programming complies with uh, i usually do a lot of irs work right so there's so many ways to get into the game now and we were just talking about um project management product owners that whole side of management because a lot of tech guys aren't uh <laughs> user friendly or communicates well with the customer him so it's just so big of a um of a domain to get anything what's up adrian ash here uh oh see my man jim said i recently joined original bank they have yeah as 400 <laughs> they still say green screen oh as 400 is a great machine a lot of banks jim you know they just strictly transaction you still can't be the mainframe i worked for um a large insurance company 10 years ago they still had a ton of mainframes because when you talk about pure transactions you still can't be the mainframe and the security is great <laughs> it's hard to hack a mainframe that's the brand working man oh yeah i worked in dod for 10 years jim that's funny you you mentioned that i worked at uh dfast which is the finance center part of dod i did that for 10 years that's how i actually got into stigs and fed ramp and all that compliance 
Um, I actually worked on a general ledger for DOD for five or six years before they actually bought one. So now shut out that DODs at that fair work, man. That's how I got fat, man. Living on that fair dollars. Did they come with an array storage? Uh, they got to an array storage. Um, a lot of the mainframes do now has a ton of array storage, but back then, now uh, you just had a little disc pack and you put your stuff on tape. So now they do though. Mm -hmm. Did they want you only to create line functions? Oh, back then, JCL, um, JCL just really tells you what tapes you want, what they call them data sets, where you want you to put your data sets and uh, how to stream them up. Back then, we were doing COBOL with a working storage section, so I did a little of that. Um, like I said, so they had their senior programmers then. Like I said, they were doing a lot of money, JM, so they, they don't let junior people with junior programmers work with the money. They let you do a little JCL and put the tapes on. <laughs> so uh cool thing is I used to do Rack F, which is how you actually give people uh access to a mainframe that's old mainframe security so i was doing baby things back then so okay back to about front end process connecting me now nah, i'm with you jim it's just amazing how far computers came to yeah a lot of people just want to build their youtube yeah that's the easy money man youtube man i think i don't think people getting hardcore in the it got a lot of people getting youtube careers now but shout out to my man uh kev tech you know he's serious uh tech g there's a lot of people in there um black heights on the sales side but i think a lot of people have but they just they just trying to get their TikTok numbers up man so they can get that uh um lead tourney of money man be making 25 grand in tips <laughs> you can't sleep. Yeah, and she was a contractor too, hell, and I'm still mad at her. Somebody should have peeled her coattails. Then banging vines, Novell. Shout out, I was Novell certified <laughs> when that was out. When was I know certified? I want to say 2005. I was Novell certified. I was doing Novell. I actually had my own company for about uh the security 25. I'm right there with you. I got 30 years in the game and probably 15 with security. I had my first, uh, and I did a video, of my first internship in 1988, putting <laughs> JCL tapes on. So I've been in the game a long time. Yeah, I done a little banging, but I really got a Novell was hot, boy. You couldn't get any hotter than Novell before, uh, what was that to Novell? For, for uh, Microsoft came out with theirs, and of course, Cisco just kind of took it over. But Novell ran it for probably a decade, Jim. I want to say I ate well with Novell for a decade. Who said trustworthy facts, facts, Jim? No mm. rookies allowed with the chips. I'm going to get a many friends job at the third time. It's probably going to be some still out there, but I was just talking about assembly work. So let me get my my lady a little love for we for we uh, transition off for her. So that's one of the main frames on IBM. Them they had those uh, take decks, but I love the uh, OJCO reels. Uh, I was suited up back there, but there she goes. Shout out to her doing assembler. That got everything kicked off from the mainframe. Then mainframe went to client server, uh, right? Uh, mini computer vaxes, then client server. Then it went to um, back into the data center. Everybody was VMware everything. Then VMware went to the cloud, right? So I'm, I mean, I'm compressing it, but right, that's the timeline. Maybe I need to do a timeline, but each one of those things, like we like to say, is you could get a bag and make a ton of money, right? Mainframe guys killed it for a while. And they kind of died off, right? Then it went to Vax and Mini Computers Pick. Then it went Client Server, right? Then no, no, Novell, everybody was doing sneaker net with five and a quarter floppies. Then Novell kind of stitched the networking game up, right? So then you had stitching, like you said, band vines. Then, of course, Cisco kind of took over that whole. So if you got on the Cisco bandwagon, I did uh, big databases. I did Oracle for 15 years, 20 years, right? Well, 15 years, that's how I made my first bag. My first 100K was actually to be an Oracle DBA, uh, doing Oracle DBA work uh, for the government, DOD, PL SQL. Uh, like I said, I ain't on that. Then when I was at DOD, they got me in security, uh, which is called STIG and FISMA, which is their compliance. Because to do a federal system, you got to get an ATO. 
an authority to operate, right? So you got to have everything hard and everything designed a certain way, all this paperwork. So that's kind of how I made my next bag. And I'm hoping to, my next 10 years is going to be a AWS cloud and mastering a multi-cloud. I think that's the future. Company's going to do everything in multi-cloud. So that's what I'm studying for. That's next, That's the next big bag. But when we just start kicking it out, right? We, you ever think we were going from this big <laughs> computers to what you got in your pocket has more power in there? What's the future is? Like I said, I want to give an RIP, an I, uh, RIP to her for doing assembly. I think that's one of the first languages to actually kick it off because um, that's actually got what your drivers and stuff was right, written in early, right? Before we start abstracting everything um, and getting everything rolling, right? So she was at the forefront of that so uh did you get gcp match azure for revenue i didn't see that google yeah google on to come on man. google got infinite money man right Kelman? so when you got infinite money right you get you can catch up uh oh we got the bots trying to get me we got the block bots got the bots on there to trying to get me Let's see what Jim say. The bots are out. Trying to get on that only verse, man. I don't know what the bots doing. Kill the bots for me. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Andrew Nash, Jam Helmet. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see what uh, Jed, I skipped over him. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, I see now. Yeah, that JC, I love y'all. Oh, there you go, right there. Did you get to meet Grace Harper back in the day? Cobra, I was still around in 2015. I did not meet Grace Harper. But she's up there though. She's definitely up there. Um, Cobra, like I said, I no, I did not. I was just barely doing Cobra. I did a little for the state, just some baby stuff. Then I really got it. It was called Pick, which is kind of relational. Uh, thing that this uh spun off of cobalt because mainframes were expensive back then <laughs> they still are expensive but from a computer power you had to have money because the mainframe was super expensive so you had to be like a big state or a big government right then you had universities starting to do a vax right which is a mini computer knockoff but even though those, those things were expensive i remember we got a pick for a small uh, insurance company i worked for i think we paid like four hundred thousand for it so now four hundred thousand, you 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 get a lot of computer power for four hundred thousand. <laughs> so uh, now you just get way more than that. And then two is Amazon, just Amazon, Google, and Azure is just making computer power dirt cheap now. And two is spinning it up like water. You can just cut it on, rent what you need, and tear down what you don't. So real quick while we uh, in there. So I just pulled that off of Wikipedia. What's a assembly language or similar? This machine code referred to assembly, commonly also abbreviated as ACM. It's a low-level programming language with very strong correspondence being between instructions and the language. You can architect machine codes. Assembly language, assembly code is converted into executable machine code. Utility be pro program referred to as assembler right because assembly depends on machine code instruction each assembly language is a, is specific to a particular computer architecture so and that's it on the side so i just want to reminisce and i remember actually right that at universities right so you got your code your what you're equaling into in your binary percentage you go to your monitor routine you had go to's which is a no-no but you know get a character zero on out not hex so you're reading from hex to to ascii right so that's how code used to be written in the early days now you know it's abstracted you got to get this you know get that read this you know in java you just bring your routines in and use them right you don't have to have your own one specific to a certain architecture Right, this went to like a IBM that will go to a Sperry. I'm trying to name some of the other ones. Right now, you do something, it gets compiled, and it runs on any Intel machine or whatever machine. Right, so it's kind of more 
almost ubiquitous, right? Kind of like Java, write once, once, run anywhere. Kind of once you compile code, right, you can port it anywhere. So that was one of the cool things, too, is just thinking about the past and reminiscing. Oh, shit, 400K, you can run some stuff, stuff in the cloud, man. I'll be running small EC2s for $3, hell, man, if you have 400,000, man. You running big stuff, big databases. So, I mean, you got major companies probably not spending 400K a year in the cloud, man. I was working with a large tax vendor. Um, I think they said they were running maybe 650 in the cloud for their yearly thing. The cool thing is he said he got so many other services with it than when he ported it on prem right so he said the only reason it costs more he got more security got more speed he got better um throughput because he could spend more stuff right and get more services right so he he, he said he spent the same amount of money but he got 40 percent more security by going to the cloud the same as he got from operations he put in the, into security right so to balance it out, but uh, let's look at, I'll pull another one out. Just gonna talk about assembly language real quick and what it actually looks like. Assembly, a low level programming language designed to simplify the instructions fed into a computer's CPU. In other words, it's a human readable abstraction on top of machine code, so programmers don't have to manually count ones and zeros. The first assembly language was created by Kathleen Booth in 1947 for the all purpose electronic computer. Yeah, we're giving a shout out to Kathleen Booth. We see her right there with the assembly. They got her in 1947. I wasn't even born yet. So that lets you know how far computers came. So let's check out the little assembly language. And like you said, <laughs> You can compile and it can run on multiple operating systems. Over the next decade, it evolved into many different formats to power the supercomputers of the day, like the IBM 7090, which had a $20 million price tag in today's dollars. Writing code and assembly was standard until the emergence of high level. Come on, man, $20 million <laughs> in today's price. But I let you know only the elite companies was rolling computers back then in the government, right? So for people to actually get in computers back then, it was super hard languages like Fortran a few years later. However, assembly is still used today for direct access to the bare metal hardware and to address low-level performance issues, often on device drivers and embedded systems. And it's also used- Shout out to that. Told you them device drivers, man. You can't get any, any spook, any, um, you can't get more speed than when you do a similar on a device driver. So that's why I still use, but once again, it's only probably 10 people in the whole world doing it used to run native software in a web browser via WebAssembly. What's tricky is that each assembly language only works on a specific CPU architecture, like ARM for Apple Silicon and Raspberry Pi, or x86 for Intel chips. To get started, you'll first need an assembler, like the NetWide assembler for x86 chips. An assembly program is divided into three sections. The text section contains the actual logic for the program. By convention, it contains an entry point called Start, which is where the code will start executing. Next, we have the block starting symbol section, which contains variables that might change throughout the life cycle of the app. And finally, the data section is where we can initialize constants or data that does not change. To the cool thing though is once you learn basic coding standards, uh, basic programming, you, it's, you can easily pick up a lot of syntax. Like I said, I've done similar. <laughs> it was years ago. Um, it was hard because when you start talking about, like he said, you programming at the chip registry level, right? Most people don't even think of that. Most people don't even know what that is anymore. So, yep, Kathleen Boots, a woman. Um, Adrian, she's right here. She's doing her thing. She helped invent assembly, one of the first computer languages used, especially when you talk about chip level. So she just passed away, so I was... Um, giving her a shout out and two, I used to do assembly and just kind of reminiscing about programming. So uh, let's see, Jim, first warehouse size rooms for Dallas, three terabytes room thinking that's a buttload of my, I know. Now you got that in your pocket. <laughs> that's fact. I already said that perform. Yeah, process, because you couldn't get it. You still can't get anything faster than assembly, right? Shout out to Tam, you bare metal. You talking about bare metal? Assembly, you bare metaling, right? 
I keep stopping a little bit so I don't get a copyright strike. <laughs> so that's why I'm stopping to talk a little bit. Clear a constant like a string. We start with a label, then use DB for defined byte to place the hello world string into memory. By itself, it doesn't do anything, and to print it to the standard output, we will also need its length. We can use equate to convert a symbol into a constant. The dollar sign will subtract the current position from the hello label, providing the length of the string. And now these constants can be referenced from the start label. In the main program, each line of code contains an instruction along with one or more operands and there are hundreds of instructions built into the language. Now, to perform operations quickly, the CPU has a limited number of registers, which are like 64-bit chunks of memory built directly into the CPU. So there's the different 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64. Once again, when you're doing assembly, you're dealing directly with memory, you're dealing directly with the CPU, so you can easily torture your own memory. When you do Java, Java does all that memory management for you. You don't have to worry about your register. It's going to handle all that memory management for you. When you do a similar, you got to do all that memory management and making sure you're not stepping on your own registry, right? So um, I always laugh between C, C Sharp, and Java. That does all that memory management for you. And in a similar, you got to manage every memory section <laughs> part of your code which makes it rough instead of the RAM. We can insert data into a register with the move instruction by providing operands for the register name and the data to store there. In this case, number one is used because it corresponds to system write on Linux. Next, we need to tell the system where to write, in which case we'll move one into the RDI register, which corresponds to the standard output in the terminal. The next register stores the message to write along with its length. Now execute the code stored in the CPU by calling the operating system kernel. Almost done, but we'll get a segmentation fault if we try to run it at this point. Update the RAX register with 60 for system exit and provide an error code of zero for success. Now use the assembler to compile or assemble your code into an object file, then use the linker to convert it into the final executable. This has been assembly language in 100 seconds. If you want to see more short videos, all that stuff he did was just to say hi, mom. <laughs> I don't know if y'all got that. All that registry, all that flipping around, all that food was just to say hi, mom. <laughs> so I'll let you know how tight you got to be in assembler. So all that 60 seconds, we was talking about registry, standard out, standard in. He did all that. Look at the bottom just to say, hi, mom. <laughs> so I let you know when you do assembly, you're going to have some lines. Shout out to Miss B Finesse. I'm glad you <laughs> just stopped by the show. Support. I, I appreciate it. Everybody go check her out. She's got a, a education channel. And she does a ton of great topics. Go subscribe to her. I'm definitely... Uh, interviewed been on her channel you always catch me in the chat and i'm out you know me she dropped the link i'm coming up so y'all can check me out on miss b finesse go check her out so let's wrap up assembly videos like this hit the like button and subscribe thanks for watching and yeah so we did all that right to get a, <laughs> to say hi mom right registry standard in standard output hi mom right so I let you know when you write a similar, you're going to have some lines. But like uh, GMR said, you, you're you not going to beat any performance for it. Uh, I keep saying I'm going to start doing more Java. I have no intention of ever going back to a similar. Never, ever. So <laughs> that's one of those things. So, whew, man. You know what? I got to work in the morning. Uh, what did I do with that? That was me running my labs earlier. Uh, I did it. I did that on Indeed. I thought, well, that might be it. So that's all I got, man. I'm gonna drop the link if anybody won't come up. But yeah, I just want to give a shout out and shout out to Helmet. Uh, because back then, and I'm just guessing. Um, a lot of times, Helmet is when you really wanted to do. When I actually went, there was no computer science. The computer science was in the math department. So when I really started going with college in 87, computer science really started getting popular. But 10 years before that, computer science was a, a sub a curriculum helmet. All computer science was in math. So most people that got, especially that time when you got in computer science, that was in the math department. Computer science wasn't big enough to be its own curriculum. Uh, then I want to say probably 70s is when it started coming out as curriculum. But before that, all of that was under because you got to think that big machine was he called it a calculator. Right. So he did a lot. So a lot of people use that to do 
long calculations and to store stuff, right? Because remember, everybody's doing that stuff on paper now, right? Then they were trying to move it over to uh, disk storage, but really, computers was really doing stuff to to do calculation, right? So the real when I mean, you looked at a lot of the first killer machines, Excel, accounting programs, insurance programs, it was used payroll programs. Um, like I said, I used to work with actuaries, it was just math majors doing uh, insurance calculations for uh, if, when you deleted or passed what you would pay out your premium. So a lot of first programs were just calculations, right? Then you got into games because that got people hooked in and, and try to get uh, regular people to use it, right? But one of the first calc was Quattro Pro, right? It was before Excel was one of the first uh, um, uh, calculators, which was Quattro Pro, was was basically Excel before Excel. Excel stole it, <laughs> right? But So that was definitely one of the things you could run on a, a 808 uh, large PC, right? It was uh, accounting software. So then you got a word perfect, <laughs> right? We talk about doing your own papers. So that was one of the first things that was, you know, computers were used for. Somebody had to pay the way much respect. Shout out. Okay, didn't know it was a math topic back then, but since they made, yeah, yeah, computers was basically uh salute, Ricky. Yeah, most of your um most of your computer things was in the uh, math department, right? Because you got to remember it was so expensive to have a computer. Only large universities had them. And they started doing the smaller VATs before they got client service. And even then, those were expensive. So you would do those in uh, departments, math departments. So then uh, they broke out in computer science. Um, then they became, shout out to Black Heights Management Information Systems from the business area. Right, then you start talking about physicists and all that stuff. All that stuff is really comp computations ran on a computer, right? All that's in the came out of the math department. Um, two, that's one reason I don't think uh, computers get a lot of love, right? Um, it doesn't come out one of the come out of one of the cool majors, right? Business, marketing, even chemistry, right? It's kind of seen a little cooler than uh, programming, all right? So, but. It's getting there, like I said on the on YouTube and stuff. It's getting a little love. Uh, so strangely, that math can push people away from my teeth, forgetting you don't need math. And I, I yeah, and I, I push that a lot. I get a little pushback in this area when I say that helmet because a lot of people, and rightly so, said the logic of doing math helps you with computers. But I agree. I took calculus too. I've never used anything close to that. I'm sure if you took some majors, once again, I worked at Fortune 500 Pharmaceutical Company, Fortune 500 Insurance Company. I programmed at Department of Defense. I programmed at a large state client. If I need a, something complex, I'm going to sit next to the speed, the SME. When I was at insurance company, I sat next to the actuary. The actuary gave me the formula to put in the computer. I didn't put it in there. Right? He said, this is what I need to calculate out to come out with this number got it right we tested he gave me the formula we made a little tweaks make sure it could scale but i didn't come up with the formula but uh still in uh, most computer uh areas they still want i think want you to take calculus right from that so my employer still use word perfect. wow word perfect still i, I thought word perfect was defunct when I, mean, I was the word perfect king right so yeah shout out to word perfect a lot of people ain't hit the word perfect I took Cal Trick and use that basic level fan. Yeah, so so then the question is, Miss B Finesse, shout out to your educational channel. Um, so if we're not using it in the real world, do we need to learn it? Is it helping us with uh what like we said, it helping you with the structure and thinking in that way, right? If then to make you a better person. Like you said, you took calc. I'm, I'm, like I said, I think I maybe used calc one time in my whole 30 years of IT, maybe one time. So what, what, what does that? So, so then, so then kids say, well, what are you making me learn something I don't need, right? But I always tell people I split it up, right? I think you could do boot camps, all that, right? As more of a technical trade school. 
But when you go to college, a lot of time you're learning, you're a scholar, right? There's a difference between taking computer as a trade and you becoming a scholar at an educational institution, right? So, the, so I think we need to separate those two. So, um, uh oh, let's see what Miss B Finesse say. No, unless she used technical field study, that's it. Educator here, <laughs> shout out. So, so yeah, so we got a, you know, so. As the educational system, I was just watching that on 60 Minutes. Since COVID, the educational system's kind of, all the test scores are really low, Miss Miss B Finesse, and we didn't do remote education right. So what can we do to help at the educational system to actually start training and making people enjoy learning and actually qualify for jobs? So. Yeah, I still get that before still around. Yeah, shout out to Word Perfect. And the sad thing where if people don't realize Word Perfect was much better than Word. Uh, shout out to Bill Gates. Once again, he uses Monopoly Power. It was Quattro Pro, Word Perfect, and something else. Microsoft just made it and bundled it all up. They gave you Word. Oh, there was another Access. What was the Access? There was another Delphi. I think it was Delphi. So you would buy those three separately. Microsoft just created them all and put it in a bundle and just sold them for half the price, took them out the market. Then Microsoft just saw us, Microsoft just start bundling stuff, right? So you couldn't compete with their uh, development team and their price, right? Because they knew if they put it into something, they just put it inside their operating system, charged a little more and then push it out. And once they did that, that became the standard. Everything learned that, and everything else got killed after that. I just found out Word Perfect still around. Me too, Helmet. I'm still confused when Adrian and I said that Word Perfect I'm professional 2021. Is it? Is that a thing for real, Helmet? Man, I didn't know that either, man. You know, Helmet Word Perfect. What the? Really, Helmet? I shout out to you. I did not know that, man. I, I thought it was dead. No, nah, shout out to Miss B for next. The education system has never been updated since it has started. Its ideologies are the same from inception. That's why it's not producing better learners and only great workers, right? So I, there's definitely, uh, like you said, logic into that, right? And that's some things, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about my channel. I'm sure I'm going to be on her educational channel. We'll be chopping it up. Because um, um, when I talk educational system, from an IT perspective, boot camps, uh, certification, do you really need a college degree? We know the return on investment. It, it's not what you can't come out owing a hundred thousand dollars and getting a job making fifteen dollars an hour, right? You can't get those two to to actually marry up and make sense, right? So those are some things that we'll be talking about. What what do I consider the blueprint in IT? Um, <laughs> funny thing is, I was actually talking to one of my granddaughters about, about the blueprint. She didn't like the blueprint, <laughs> so shout out to her. But long story short, a lot of times is if you stay home, go to a community college. I taught at a community college for 10 years. You can get all your electives and basics super cheap, transfer 98% of your credits to a large university. I'm in Indiana, so you got four big-time universities here. Transfer to IU, Purdue, Notre Dame, uh, Indiana State University spend about 30 hours because i think my computer science degree was 42 hours i need 130 to graduate so i took 90 hours of just stuff to make me a, a real rounded individual it didn't work but i had to take stuff right so what actually is the blueprint right if i would start over and say these are the things i was doing so i told my grandson he's gonna be an educational guinea pig you like that either so i think you can start working on your certs in middle school right so once you get your skirts, certs, then you can start working on your help desk while you're in high school. Then start on your um, IT career right after high school with a boot camp. Uh, your summer before actually your uh, senior year, you start doing boot camps and getting you ready, right, for the cloud. And if you're going to do programming and networking and get those skills and be ready when you graduate, right? So mm. I can't see at Miss B Finesse. You can't see her. Uh, she's in here. I'll highlight her. I got to see. Something's going. I don't know what's going. 
I still really you said I watch your man this week. Shout out to Quattro Pro. <laughs> Gotta hit the rack. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for coming through, Jim. We appreciate it. Uh hit the subscribe button if you didn't subscribe. Come on back. We'll have you up on the panel and we'll reminisce about main frames for, for the for the kiddos. <laughs> Thanks for coming through, man. We appreciate it. Uh there. Yeah, my son did that. He graduated, uh, graduated high a year early in IT college now. So proud. Yeah, that's cool. I think that's really the blueprint. Um, so I think he's on on the right path. Um, and let's you know, if he needs anything, you can reach out to me. You got before the billions. You got all the contact. Before the billions, better. He says text probably better than mine. Can I see? I don't know what's going on. I got to see what's going on. I think I got my restream. So yeah, I'm putting highlighting your both on there. So mm. I gotta figure out what's going on in there. I checked, I didn't have anybody in my block status. I checked because they said a lot of times your moderators could be blocking people when you don't know. So I checked, I didn't see anybody blocked in my moderator. So I gotta see what's going on with my restream. I got the pro edition, it should work, <laughs> but I just like the extra stuff because I feel like it takes away from the main classes you need. For example, I need to take the calculus one, CCNA. Physical education, cyber ops once a month. Yeah, that's true. But the, come on, Ricky, man. That's making you well-rounded, man. We need you to be a well-rounded individual, man. We don't want you to be no incel, Ricky, man. We need you to take some Toastmasters, some management, some speaking classes, a foreign language. We need all of that, man. You need to learn about the, the history of the United States, Ricky, man. We got to make you well-rounded. We got to fund a university. Adrian, you see Miss B Finesse. She said uh email. I'm highlighting it right now. So I tell I figure out what's going on. Mm. Calculus took steady price in my phone. Oh, fact, fact, man. Calculus was brutal for me too. And I took calculus in uh 88. Yeah, I don't think I took calculus in 89, <laughs> Ricky. So I think it was a monster in 89. <laughs> That's all I know. No, Adrian, no, for accidentally blocking folks. <laughs> so, yeah, Miss B, I got to go check on my uh, block list and see what's going on. Because when Gabe comes over here, it's struggle security. So, I don't know. I got this restream on top of YouTube. So, I don't know if it's something between my restream or my block. Restream is highly used by a lot of people, though. So, I think it would be known out there. So, uh-oh. Oh, yeah, learn Spanish, French, or Mandarin. Facts, facts, man. I probably would go whew, maybe Mandarin to do something a little different. Mm. Let's see. Let's get back. Put that on there. Uh, yes, I would tell my grandkids about George Washington. Shout out to that George Washington Carver. No, I'm just joking. Shout out to George Washington Carver. But yeah, no, nah, so that's the thing, though. But there's some validity to try to make sure we're aware of the, you know, the three branches, voting, how bills are made. It's not you. It's on her side, OBS. It's an inside joke. With, okay, cool, cool. So, yeah, so I don't know, Ricky. So that's the thing I think we're, which I, I'm not opposed for. I think we're going to make IT more like a trade then you know college would be more of a scholarly thing i think we can draw that dotted line and um be successful in both actually so i think that's where we need to get from a, um educational background especially with inflation and how much education costs you gotta start breaking those down and uh, getting people in and out you can't come out on a hundred thousand dollars for a degree that doesn't make any sense so that's all I had. I was just wrapping up. I saw, I just want to see RIP to Kathleen Booth getting that assembly started, getting that mainframe game uh, kicked off uh, for, you know, really what it is today, right? And two is like JM said, I don't know if he's still in the chat, is I'm 55 this year. Will I still be hardcore in IT when I'm 75, right? I think I need 10 more years to retire. I think I could retire at 66, but. Will I stay in IT? Probably. Will I still be on YouTube? Probably. Right? Because YouTube, uh, for me, as I get older, is I got a nice tribe. I get to talk to young people, and I get to learn a lot from you guys, right? 
And sometimes I learn stuff I don't want to learn, the red pill stuff. So, so I get to learn a lot of stuff. <laughs> Some stuff I don't want to learn, right? But it's all good. As an older person, right, I think you need to kind of stay abreast of some things, not trying to be, you know, young or hip hop, just trying to stay with trends so you can stay what's relevant, right? Because things change quick and technology just get, seems to get quicker and quicker. What took 10 years now seems to take two years, right? I had original bag phone, right? So when you see the technology just of the cell phone, right now when technology kicks and you know, from MySpace to Facebook to, you know, different, like we're talking about from, <laughs> from word perfect to word, right? Technology just seems to get faster and faster. OPS, email me. I want to talk to the OP. Oh, that's me. <laughs> I've seen email me. I'm going to talk about this topic in the main channel and educational channel. I know you got two channels from, yeah, we could do that. I'll reach out to you. Every time you reach out to me, I'll be like three days too late, Miss B Finesse. I apologize. I'll be late on my emails. Miss B Finesse, come through. I'll be seeing it like three days later. I got to do a better job checking on my email. Uh, shout out as an ex professor, we get 48 hours to read an email. So I'll be I'll be lacking on the email. But shout out, Miss B Finesse. Now we can definitely do that because you know I'm all about the education and, and you know I could talk about that all day. So I'm thinking, uh, once again, making uh, tech into more of a trade school like electrician um really getting an apprenticeship right everybody's trying to find mentors get an apprenticeship um the apprenticeship now really is the boot camp right yeah, boot camp gives you real world experience gives you a certificate saying you good boom right so what can we do to um really formalize that really make that happen really sign off on that right so you can actually get that and get a job and start on your way to you know making real money I took up a different equation in lower division math and my brain fought out. Then I switched over to paralegal school. Shout out to paralegals. I almost went to law school, right? We, but we can schedule in the future so we can plan. I'm horrible with email too. So I get it, fam. Now I'll, I'll hit you up because I, I got some of your older emails. I was late on that. So yeah, we can get that scheduled. I'm, I'm definitely for that. Like I said, I'm definitely on the educational tip. So yeah, if I'm right there, I got to get up. I think I got to be up by 8.30. It ain't too bad. It's 11 here. So I'm, I've been up to be with B2B to 1 a.m. in the morning. Shout out to the young people. But now that's all I got. I wanted to send out a little shout out to Kathleen Booth. Booth, rest in peace. Uh, getting that assembly language and really kicking off. Really one of the people to kick off. My man brought up Hopper for Cobalt. Definitely one of the people that kicked off that. Because Cobalt is more abstract and that actually sits on top of a similar, right? So it made it easier to program, right? Each time you got there. Now you got code generators and micro focus code balls. And like my man said, you can bootstrap stuff up to get it going. But just one with little history lesson today. That's an OG, little quick history lesson. So that's all I got. RIP to Kathleen Booth. Uh, let's get it. Monday's here. I'm tired already, man. I think I'm going to take a couple of days off around the holiday and just go somewhere i might go to vegas or go somewhere and sit down and my mom says go somewhere and sit still night job thanks pbo helps for like always i appreciate it ricky uh don't give up man we need you to be a real rounded individual man you up next you the next generation you up next pbo out everybody have a great day i'm i promise i'm reach out to you miss b finesse so we can get that uh set up everybody have a great week let's get it